Hey everybody, welcome to Extra Time Act 2. Shep Messing as always, I'm Jason the producer. It was a crazy week in soccer all over the world last week, but we're gonna look at the Western Conference today a little bit, with starting with that game that Seattle played against DC. Yeah, that was the best game for me. I love that game. The atmosphere in Seattle, absolutely electric. Packed house, colors, and a great game. Both the teams, DC United against Seattle, were attacking each other. Mm -hmm. Seattle, I'm sure, really upset that they squandered the lead. Definitely one of the more entertaining games this season. But what really stood out for me, Shep, is the play of Freddie Montero lately. Three goals in three games. I think the measure of great players in every sport is how do you adjust. So Freddie Montero came into this league, scored a couple of goals, and all of a sudden every player knew him. Played him hard, played him physically, tried to shut him down. What does Freddie Montero do? Takes a little bit of time to adjust and now he's just brilliant on the ball. He's really making plays single-handedly against New York. That was an incredible uh, steal and finish. Yeah, Montero again, if not for Josh Wicks uh, and Danny Sapero, he could have had five goals the past week. So again, Montero, great on the ball, can skin a defender, excellent te technique, can can obviously score goals, and uh, you know he's a handful for teams. You mentioned Josh Wicks. It was a tough week for Josh Wicks. We saw six goals get behind him in the two games they played, including a 3-1 thrashing at Colorado. Now. I don't look too much into this from D.C.'s side. It was a tough game after an emotional game Wednesday night to travel at Colorado, which is a tough place to play. But you got to give Colorado credit. They're, they're really, I mean, they're making noise in the Western Conference. They've kind of had a, a light schedule lately, so mm -hmm. you're not thinking about them as much. But they're hanging on the, in, in fourth place with two games in hand. They're really making, you know, teams just worry about that. Uh, Gary Smith has done a great job retooling that team. I think we all agreed before the season that they looked good defensively. The issue was how will they be getting forward in the attacking third, and how would they be without Connor Casey? Well, Omar mm -hmm. Cummings, he's been brilliant. And Pat Noonan filled in well. I worry about them if Connor Casey and Omar Cummings are both gone. You know, what's your forward grouping? Maybe it's Jacob Peterson and Pat Noonan. As long as you defend well, and Matt Pickens did a good job as well. They beat up on DC United, but Matt Pickens made one crucial save on a cross to the far post uh, header by Pontius, so right. he keeps them in the game. Yeah. We mentioned Colorado being in striking distance in the Western Conference. Back over in the Eastern Conference, everybody's in striking distance. Well, almost everybody. Yeah, Red Bull got relegated, so they're out of the mix. But you look at the Eastern Conference, yeah. Columbus started out having a nightmare, but we knew they were a good team. Chicago's a I'll good team. I'll give you credit, Shep. Columbus dropping one to Dallas this week. Uh, well, you know, you still have to go play the game. And, and Dallas, right. give them a lot of credit. They're, they're losing 1-0 at home to Columbus. Mm -hmm. Last 10 minutes, they get the equalizer, they get the game winner. That's something that Dallas can, can build on. But yeah. in the East, you have, I think, Columbus. Um, I think D.C. United is a very good team. Right. And Chicago. And Chicago is a good team for sure. Yeah, and those are really the teams that are probably the favorites to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. I think when you look at the with the rest of the teams, I mean, really, we're talking about Toronto, Kansas City, New England, and New England. When you look at those teams, I I think Toronto is the team that's really you know making moves, probably gonna gonna win out out of that group, only because Kansas City's been so inconsistent this year. Toronto bringing in Ali Gerba, who's a forward that will probably help them. He's supposed to be a very good player, and, I, and you have De Rosario, you have Cole Robinson, Sam Cronin's yeah. been great in the midfield, Stefan Fry in goal, Dickio up top, so they have weapons. Yeah. And New England, I, I think, you know, we've kind of talked about it before, they're so reliant on Taylor Twelman to be in that lineup, and not to say that he couldn't come back and have a great second half of the season, but... You know, if he doesn't, they're really not in contention. Yeah, Stevie Nichol has been a miracle worker in terms of keeping together a decimated New England team. Uh, but but I agree. I, we're going to see a lot of player movement. We've got yeah. transfer windows coming up. So I'm sure New England looking for players. Transfer window coming up. We'll see what's in store for these teams. Well, what's next for us is the email bag. So, Shep, the first question comes from Jens, and he basically asks, a lot of MLS teams and coaches are playing 4-4-2, it seems that there's not a lot of creativity with the lineups. You know, it's 4-4-2 against 4-4-2 in whatever game you see. What do you think about that? Well, well yeah, it's a good question. I'm a former goalkeeper, so I like nine in the back with a sweeper. But I think coaches all over the world, and Major League Soccer is no exception, you want to get players to 
play in a system you're comfortable with, but you have to adjust if you don't have the players. So Stevie Nichol for many years played three in the back. He had Parkhurst in the middle. Now he's playing four at the back. DC United always flooded the midfield with five, three in the back. Dominic Kinnear, 4-4-2, four, four, pushing a high back line. Mm -hmm. It's up to the coaches to find that flexibility both in the formation and in terms of, you know, you got to get back and defend and right. get forward no matter what you're playing. And really it comes down to tactics a lot of times. You could have a 4-4-2 four, four, for, you know, three different teams and they could all kind of play it a little differently. Um, I think DC United was a good example of a team that can play the 3-5-2. They push Rodney Wallace up on the wing. You know, they do like to flood the midfield, but they can also play four in the back if they feel that that's what's going to get them the result they need for a certain game. Yeah, I think a great point. And again, limited rosters in Major League Soccer. So coaches, it's very difficult f for them to change totally when they're playing an away game right. based on an opponent. Do we have enough different players where I can change the system to play an away game against Seattle, for example. Right, and and I think, you know, something you gotta look at is Dominic Kinnear's success with the 4-4-2, you can't really argue with it. I mean, he plays the 4-4-2 and he wins. So you're not gonna say, hey Dominic, that's not exciting enough for us. Cause they do play an exciting game for the most part. Well, that's all the time we have for you today, but we did promise emails. So we're going all emails on Thursday this week. <laughs>